four simple tips for good classroom management. Hey there, I'm Charlotte with Colorful Teaching For You. Thank you so much for joining me. I don't know if you remember this, but when I was younger and high school, I remember having these little uh, pages or paper pieces and we would write notes in them and then we would scrunch them up into a ball and throw them at each other. Honestly, we did this because nobody really paid attention to us. So we were able to do stuff. We were able to get away with that kind of stuff. Now I've taught in a grade seven class where my kids um, had a lot of behavioral needs and I had to teach 60 plus kids. I've also taught in a grade six, seven class where my kids with emotional needs would throw things at kids, uh, throw chairs at people when they were angry, they would punch people. Um, I've taught in our local um, correctional facility for high school students and I'm also currently am teaching um, kids with a lot of emotional needs. So I understand the importance of getting your classroom management skills down. Now, when I first started teaching my first year, I can tell you without a shadow of doubt that I got home every night and I cried, well, almost every night, because I had so many learning needs packed into my class that I literally thought that I couldn't do it and I wasn't meant to be a teacher. And this was really heartbreaking. I mean, eventually I picked myself up and I went and I read everything I could find about classroom management skills. I um, meant to, I, I um, asked for a mentor. I watched other teachers. I had people observe me. And eventually I was able to fine tune my classroom management skills and was able to um, have oh, end the year on a strong note and have a much better uh, following year as well. And so, and I'm still a teacher because <laughs> I love it. So it's really important for you to be able to get your classroom management skills down. So what, what we're going to outline today are four very simple steps, but they're really, uh, it takes time for, uh, because you need to develop this in your own time. Okay. But I don't want to overwhelm you and in, in, inundate you with so much that you walk away feeling like you can't do it. So I'm just going to look at four steps. Okay. Ready? Number one, simple. Outline clear expectations and consequences. So whether you're reading this article or you're listening to this video today, um, which is um, at the beginning of the school term, or perhaps you're doing this at the middle of the school term, it really doesn't matter because it, do it doesn't matter where you decide to start. I want you to be able to do this right now. Figure out what your expectations are and come up with consequences for it. For example, if you're teaching a classroom and you've got kids talking over you, well, we're, we're going to talk about our expectations of when I am talking, when I am teaching, we're not going to be talking over me, right? Or when somebody else is talking, we don't talk over them because it, well, it's rude for one. And then we outline why as well. The next thing is, if this happens, then here is a consequence. Or for example, if um, we're doing quiet time work, individual work, we are not talking to our neighbor. But if we're doing that, then you're showing me that you're not ready to be able to um, work on um, on anything else. You, I'm not going to be giving you extra time or you need to take it home. You choose which one best suits your needs. Okay. So step number two is form routines. So take those expectations that you've created and practice those expectations. It's really important to practice it. I know the curriculum is important. I get it. But if you don't get your classroom management under control, your kids are going to walk all over you. So make sure you practice it one routine at a time and then practice it again. Revisit it after some time as well. Make sure it forms into a routine. Number three is build connections. So have your children form connections with each other. So have them talk to each other, ask them specific questions. If you don't know what questions to ask them, then I've got three questions that I'd love for you to look at. Check out the link in the description for full episode. Go to step number three. I'd love for you to ask them these questions, but also for you to answer these questions because it's going to help them um, form a connection with you as well. And I've also got a free resource where all you need to do is download it, print it, and then give it to your kids because it's going to help them build connections with each other. Again, it's um, free and it's under step number three, build connections. Number four is capture their attention. You need to find a way to capture their attention, especially if when you're talking, your kids are talking over you. It's got to be fun and exciting, right? So I've got um, a, an article. It's free. 
um, that I'd love for you to take a look at. It gives you um, quick ways that you can get their attention. It's got ways, things that you can practice at home. So I recommend practicing it first at home on your own and then tweaking it and then practicing it with your kids, tweaking it there, make sure it suits your needs. It, they're super fun and they're really, really quick to be able to implement, all right? That's it for right now. I just want to re, um, recap what we've talked about. We've talked about the importance of getting your classroom management skills under control and four steps to do that. Number one is outline clear expectations and consequences. Number two is form routines. Number three is build connections. And number four is capture their attention. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you again, same place, same time next week. In the meantime, remember to create, experience, and teach from the heart. Take care, my friends. Bye.